What's up, everyone? This is Silver Slayer. If you guys didn't know, you gotta be subscribed. You wanna know why? Because I do tons of giveaways. I'm doing a 39,000 subscriber silver giveaway right now. The entry video is still open, so you still have a chance to win some free silver. Now, when I hit 40,000 subscribers, which is right around the corner, I'm, I'm, I'm giving away over $1,000 worth of silver. So being subscribed is a no-brainer, right? I also post daily videos just to make it so, so much better. Now, this video is definitely crucial. We're talking about the explosive side of silver and how nobody really sees how, how, how astronomical this could be. Now, first things first, let's look, at, let, let, let's look at the last, you know, 20 years of silver prices. So, we see, you know, early 2000s, silver was sitting five dollars five six seven dollars and then around 2008 this is the credit crisis now the initial credit crisis shot silver up to around twenty dollars right and then the crash because that was a very very uh, fast appreciation i mean silver is definitely a slower type of investment but you see this very very fast price increase and then it went into overbought territory so it sold off and then you see it start to pick back up. Recession slash depression, billion dollar stimulus leads to $50 silver, but look how fast it went up, so it crashes that fast. That's why when you see silver skyrocketing, I always say I want a correction to happen because if it doesn't correct, it's gonna be like Bitcoin in 2017. The same thing happens and then it crashes and it takes years for it to recover. So we're going to want this to be more of a gradual approach, not so high, so fast. Now, billion dollar stimulus recession slash depression. Nowadays, this is the beginning again. We saw $11 silver, right? Just like the 2008 credit crisis. And then we have, and the, his, the, the story's still writing itself. But we have a different situation now. Yes, recession slash depression, but now we have trillion dollar stimulus, which the difference between a billion dollars and a trillion dollars is a lot. I don't think the human mind can, can, can comprehend how much more a trillion dollars is than a billion. So now we're throwing trillions of dollars out more than once. We also have a recession slash depression, but we also have a global pandemic and a silver shortage and all this silver needed for 5G technology. Back then, silver wasn't anywhere near as technologically advanced or our world or our economy was nowhere near as advanced technologically. So silver wasn't needed at the rate it is today with solar panels, electric vehicles, 5G towers. So if that led silver to $50 back then, imagine what this chart's going to look like moving forward. And we even have proof. Look at the gold to silver ratio. When this chart, when, when silver hit $11 in March of last year, we saw something interesting. We actually broke through history. The gold to silver ratio was 125 to 1. That was the highest it's ever been in the last 5,000 years. That, in March last year was something we're going to be reading in history books. But look what the gold to silver ratio is now, 64 to 1. So silver has astronomically out, outpaced, outperformed gold. And it's going to keep going lower. You know why? Because silver has more value than people want to give it. Or, or people are, are, are trying to say that, that gold has more value, but, but without reason. There's no context. Tell me why gold has more value. Silver is used in a lot more things than gold. Is Silver is a monetary metal and an industrial metal. And now this article is going to go over the Great Silver Reset, comparing to what happened back in 2008, the fundamentals. And we're also going to go on some charts. This is a great article. The link's going to be in the description. So let's jump right into it. The Great Silver Reset. Silver sentiment. If you hold a silver coin in your hand, you are instantly struck by the weight of the object, right? Silver is super dense. The ultra smooth metal slides effortlessly across your fingers in the light of the day. Your eyes catch the glint of the reflected sun. It is very hard not to smile when you are up close and personal with real money. And that's so true. Hold a $20 bill in your left hand and hold a one ounce silver coin in your right hand. And tell me which one is more valuable. There is a very human connection to silver spanning 6,000 years, which means we all intuitively agree that when it comes to the end game, we're all going to accept a precious metal as real money over anything conjured up by a government, right? 
Money is something that cannot be created nor destroyed. Money, fiat currency definitely is. Uh, our fiat-based system is, what, 100, not even 200 years old? And that's crazy to think about because 200 years old compared, compared to 6,000 years? And by the way, our fiat system was designed to fail as soon as we got so rid of silver as real money. Uh, inflation kicks in and it, there's, there's no possible way it could work, right? There's no absolutely no possible way a fiat based system or a financial system could work it's like trying to pay off a credit card with another credit card we're getting ourselves out of debt by replacing it with more debt that's not going to work and i don't know who in the world thinks or thought that we could go by this standard without knowing what the the, the, the collapse that was ahead over the last 365 days a lot has happened to the health of the world's population and economies. And by the way, if you guys think that's all conspiracy, that, that our financial system is corrupt and the dollar is crashing, I can give you some statistics. The dollar has lost 98% of its purchasing power. It's not 99%, not 97%. 98% is a literal, statistical, proven number. 98% of its purchasing power is gone. Only 2% left. 44% in the last 20 years. So it's it's rapidly getting worse. And when it hits 99% or 100%, what do you think is going to happen? The system cannot last forever. Look, resetting the system. Build back a better using new ways and ideas. Improve system to benefit all humanity, not just the 1%. So when we're looking forwards, wouldn't money make more sense to be digital wouldn't it make more sense to be digital but backed by something with real value? It only makes sense. I couldn't picture in some new sci-fi movie 100 years from now for them to still be using paper money, right? Holding, holding dollar bills in their pocket. No, it's going to be something digital like Bitcoin. And people don't realize that, but Bitcoin is already replacing the dollar right in front of our faces. Amazon, PayPal, everywhere except Bitcoin. And it's literally replacing the dollar right in front of us, but we are not even acknowledging it or realizing it. It's crazy. So, in reality, and, and actually, um, the, 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 the global leaders are already looking for things to replace the dollar. You have USD coin, it's USDC, it's literally... A, a crypto that's called USD coin, US dollar coin. Then you have things like Tether that are pegged to the US dollar. Uh, you also have Ripple, which is controlled by central banks. So, I mean, we are definitely going into the route of crypto being accepted even by big business and major governments. So, if you guys don't think crypto is the new thing, then I don't know what you're looking at. So, there's also some scary, some scary things to think about because if the U.S. dollar has lost 98% of its purchasing power, it's losing strength. Remember, the U.S. dollar is the world's reserve currency, so everyone across the world relies on the dollar's strength. So if the dollar collapses, everyone, ever, everything does. So in reality, rehashing of an old and failed system is inevitable, but for some of the great reset did occur, and when it did, or uh, which one was until recently, was largely overlooked. The potential buying opportunity of a lifetime occurred when silver traded down to $12. It was actually $11 in March. After this pandemic financial crash which bottomed in March 2020, there has been a lot of commentary on the reflation trade. When the world feels like it's metaphorically stopped turning, everything has to reset. Our personal views are reconsidered, and we're all vulnerable to manipulation when everything looks at its bleakest. We were forced to look around at globalization and consider pros and cons of what happens when global supply chains break down. We're left wondering whether the financial system would come to a halt, and if so, what chaos would ensue? And we definitely, uh, we, we can't over-catastrophize it. We have to keep it realistic, but we also have to be prepared, right? You can, you can listen to the SHTF channels and all that and be prepared. I don't want to go to that extent. I don't like pushing fear. Uh, I don't like pushing FUD, which is fear, uncertainty, doubt. You got to be realistic, though. That's why I was talking about the reality of throwing trillions of dollars out is not good, even if people are receiving paychecks that they need it's still as dangerous because there's going to be a cost to pay and we don't have that money to give out yes i do agree that stimulus was a great thing but there's still going to be a cost to pay and it's going to be scary to see what that cost is or, or the consequence from it 
So with the economic reflation being stimulated by trillions from central banks across the globe, the balance between what is needed and what is best for economy started to be outweighed. And that's what I was just talking about, right? They had no choice, though. If, if candidate A, B, C, or D wanted to win the presidential election, they had to throw out that trillion-dollar stimulus word. Now, they know that, that that's going to be a very detrimental thing to do, but they had to give the people uh, that support, right? What are we going to do? Just tell them, oh, we can't give out trillions of dollars because we don't have it. We're actually in debt. No. No, they can't say that. They have to give it out, which means in return, print more money and printing more money deflates the dollar because it oversaturates, it overfloods the system. And when that happens, it also pushes precious metals prices up because precious metals, gold and silver, have a direct correlation to the dollar index. When the dollar index is low, gold and silver is high. So since we know the dollar index is going to be lower from throwing all this money out, we can literally guarantee that precious metals are going to be up. So, you know, they go over some of the most dramatic moves and all this stuff, but, and definitely with increased volatility, there's going to be a lot of opportunity, but it's also risky, right? It's definitely also risky. You have to be careful because there's a pretty penny to be made, but you can also lose a lot of money if you don't know what you're doing. We can go back to this chart. Most people buy low, or I tell people to buy low, sell high. Right here, this is probably when most people were buying silver. You want to know why? Because everyone was talking about it when it's this high. Everyone's saying, oh, silver's at $40, $50. Everyone's talking about it. So then everyone's like, oh, I need to get some silver. But you know what happens? Then it starts to go down. And those people that hopped on the silver train sell it because they're like, whoa, wait, wait, wait. It's crashing. What, what, what's happening? You're supposed to get in before everyone talks about it. Silver isn't being talked about too much yet. I mean, the Reddit short squeeze is a two-day thing, but still, in the grand scheme of things, silver's still down here. Literally, I could show you. It's still down here. And when it, when it gets up to here, $40, $50, everyone's going to start talking about it, and that's when it's too late. If, everyone, if you're trying to hop on something, once everyone knows about it, it's too late. You've missed your opportunity. you got to get in before the curve. So anyways, I just wanted to show the, from a chart-based perspective and, and, and a little bit of context, backstory, looking at the historical patterns of what silver can do. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, if you thought it was educational, informational, at least entertaining, make sure to smash the like button. I post daily videos every single day, giving you guys the newest, latest most relevant information. I'm never going to tell you stuff you don't need to know. I spent all day today uh, remodeling my office. It is insane now. I have a really cool office set up, but the desk I got, this huge L desk with like a hutch, it's huge. I had to put it together and it was just a pain in the butt, but I got everything set up now. Now I'm just kind of decorating, get everything in line. So um, I'll be able to work more now since I'm not working on that project. So uh, I appreciate you guys so much. I'm going to be announcing the 39,000 subscriber giveaway winner probably tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. I also am getting a, uh, a big box of silver tomorrow, so look for an unboxing video tomorrow as well. I got some cool stuff coming. Anyways, thanks for tuning in. This was Silver Slayer. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.